Rafa made is the champion. Yep. Wow, there we go. Nice little highlight there, the Mendez brothers. My name is Budo Jake, and we're here for the June 22nd, 2012 edition of This Week in BJJ. I'm joined here by Budo Dane. Dane, how are you doing today? I am very well. How are you? Great. Dane handles some of our social media here at Budo Videos headquarters. And we have our special guest here, Guillerme. Uh, first of all, Hafa Mendez over here on the left, and Guillerme Mendez on the right. Great to have you guys here today. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Hafa, yesterday was your birthday, oh if dang. I'm not mistaken. Yes, <laughs> I'm getting old. 23. <laughs> 23 years old. And what did you, how did you spend your day yesterday? Uh, to be honest, working. <laughs> working. <laughs> because, uh, you know, the grand opera for our academy is coming soon, mm -hmm. July 1st. So, we were like all day signing up, people up, you know, working. Right. Not a time for rest. Yeah. We are going to enjoy the weekend. Like, mm -hmm. It's going to be cool. Nice. Speaking of, uh, uh, of rest... I see you guys, uh, your weight has changed a lot since the Worlds. Tell me a little bit about how much your weight has changed. <laughs> I got 10 pounds afterwards. <laughs> Gained 20 pounds. <laughs> yeah, some shoes worse. Mm -hmm. But since January, we have been eating so half, and now it's uh, time to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And Hafa, how much weight have you gained? Only 10 pounds. 10 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> about ice cream or... We need to take a break, mm. rest a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just for just this month, then yeah. we start the diet again. It how, have. how good it, does that feel? Oh. Be able to eat whatever you want after a tournament. So good. Like, <laughs> like it almost <laughs> makes all the work of the tournament worth it for that one meal afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest thing that you miss when you're cutting weight? Oh man, as far as food goes. Uh, like I'm, I don't eat a lot of sugar, a lot of cans, but like cake or something like this. But uh, I like ice cream. Mm. Mm. Like ice cream, I like a lot. So What's your favorite flavor? <laughs> like uh, strawberry. Mm -hmm. I like a lot. I <laughs> love chocolate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I miss a lot. <laughs> How long do you guys diet for before a big tournament? For me, it's not that hard. Like, like two months before the tournament, I started my diet. Then one week before the tournament, I'm fine. Right. No, but, but for me, it's a little bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. So do you go on one diet or do you make it does the diet get more difficult well, as to be know? honest, this time uh Andrea Govon's wife, uh -huh. Angelica, she eats so health and she helped me a lot. Right. Yeah. I heard it takes you three months to get down yeah, to yeah. that's incredible. I can't imagine I hate cutting weight. I can't yeah, imagine that. I hate to. <laughs> <laughs> it's always but getting harder and harder. But <laughs> I love winning <laughs> How did you guys reach the agreement that the older brother was going to be the one that's going to have to cut weight more than the younger brother? <laughs> well, he's a nice guy. <laughs> 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 I think I, I'm a uh, little bit shorter, so mm -hmm. it's easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And wh why not both compete in the same weight class? Uh, like before, like in the uh, purple and brown belt, we used to fight in the same division. But uh, at the black belt division, like people really want to see like the finals match. Mm -hmm. like so for us, it's hard for us to fight in the finals. We are brothers training together every day. Mm -hmm. Even now we are we are fighting against um, our teammates. We decide to do that. Like even we are training together, we, we decide to fight. Okay. Like, but uh, against my brothers, it's kind of weird. So mm -hmm. we prefer like he can drop wa the weight, you know, go like feather. So mm -hmm. I think it's better for us, better for like for everyone people like to see yeah the and uh, when we are training we are trying to be champions not to be the second yeah right right it's really hard like you train so hard and then you go there even if i get the first place he needs to be second place or even like he can be the first place he'll be the second place so yeah. it's much better if both of us can can achieve the main goal mm -hmm. to be the champion but you mentioned that it's getting more difficult the older you get do you think yeah. there'll be a time when you just can't make that weight cut or maybe i go back to eight yeah, <laughs> then I can go better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so both of you will move up at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, but not for now. Right. What about the absolute division? A lot of people would love to see how you guys do in the absolute. What do you think about that? I think for the EBG, EBGGIF, it's hard now because the abs the absolute is before the 
your own division. So mm. I don't want to train hard, die, and then get there and maybe get hurt mm-hmm. before yeah. my my division. Yeah, because it's like Kalazans, he fought twice the open class, like I think 2007 or 2008. I'm I think sure. last two years. Last two years, mm-hmm. he fought yeah. the open class and he got hurt. Right. And he could not find his way division. Right. right. And like he can, he has a chance to be the champ. So I don't want to do the same mistake. So yeah. This year we were training together and we said you you don't. We told him you, you will not fight yeah. the open class. You know I wanna fight. I wanna fight. I like to fight open. No, you you will not. You, I don't wanna see you getting hurt. Yeah. Again. He knows he can do very well. His game is really good, but yeah. you know, big guys they are stronger and we don't like to tap. Right. So. We will not give you up, even if uh, someone try to like try to submit us. We'll be, we don't like to tap. We are it's gonna try to, answer. yeah. So I think it's not a good deal for us mm-hmm. now. Maybe maybe if in the future when we we see we win more titles, we how can go. How if many they change? Maybe if they change for the yeah. open class right. after the weight division. Well, that I was for sure. I was just thinking about that because of the schedule it doesn't make sense for you to lose all this weight and then go into a division where there ev- everybody's going to weigh more than you yeah. yeah it's all risk for you guys yeah yeah it's hard it's tough yeah like cutting weight then you need to go there fight the open class right so if they change like put the open class after the weight division probably we are gonna fight <laughs> yeah <laughs> because we, we like to fight we we want to fight the open class because we train f- a lot of have guys we train Fandre every day so we don't we don't care about the weight we just want to win the tournament so I think the best deal f- for now we don't fight the the open class just fight our division and try to keep our title right, right. so let's back up and, and I just want to say it's nice having you guys here in America now <laughs> yeah, but you. when when and why did you decide to move here um like since we came here first time, uh, 2007, we had the idea like to move here and uh, open up a nice, uh, very traditional jiu-jitsu school. Because you can see like many MMA academies, even if a uh, good jiu-jitsu program, but uh, it's still an MMA academy, like with guys punching each other in the octagon, like. Right guys without shirt walking around. So our idea is to open a jiu-jitsu studio, like very traditional, only j- like jiu-jitsu class. And uh, it really needs to be a very family environment, you know, when you can have your kids, your daughter, like five years old, trained there. You know, that's our, our idea for now, mm-hmm. our, our goal. It's not to have like a crazy calm, like a fight club. It's it's a school with a family environment. Right. But that's a big decision for y- young guys to make, to move to another country, have to learn another language, yeah. and get established in a new place. Has anybody given you, told you that you should stay in Brazil and, and teach Brazilians? Like, uh, always, like, when we, you have an opportunity, I think you need to think about and see what will be better for your future. So, w- like, we decided to come here because it's a great opportunity for us. And uh, a lot of people ask us, why you guys don't stay in Brazil, teach class there, you have a lot of Brazilians, fans, you know. And the lifestyle there is really good. So yeah. We have our family there, it's so good. But, like, today, uh, for the Jiu-Jitsu, like, if you want to teach Jiu-Jitsu, if, if you want to be, like, have your own academy, it's much better the opportunity here is much better than in Brazil. By opportunity, so do you mean money? Yeah, like, it's, it's good for the business. It's much better for the business than it is in Brazil. Mm-hmm. So here we can have a nice lifestyle in California. Above here, we have uh, we can have a, a better opportunity for our business because we love Jiu-Jitsu, we love to compete, but we need to think about the future, mm-hmm. right? What am I going to do when I stop competing? Mm-hmm. So I need to have my academy, my business, because... I want to have a family. So mm-hmm. I'm married now. 23, <laughs> but I'm married. I got right. married. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Thank you. 
We so, both get ma- got married. Same day? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Same day. <laughs> so Different uh, women though, right? <laughs> 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 so I think it's really important. Like, you know, you need to think about this. So it's just because it will be better for us, better for our future, you know, for our family. Yeah, also, or the city that uh, we, l- we live in Brazil, it's really small, Rio Claro. So in Ramon is doing a great job there. He has his own yeah. academy. And even if you open, we open an academy there, we'll be really close and... Yeah, it's hard, like small city. Mm-hmm. He has a nice academy there. It's hard for open for us to open another academy there. Like, we'll be like... Competing, why? competing yeah, with your teacher. Yeah, competing with my... My professor, you know, doesn't make any sense, so... Do you think Southern California is the mecca of jiu-jitsu? Man, for sure, now, like, a lot of champions teaching class here, right. jiu-jitsu getting uh, bigger and bigger. All the students, uh, they ask, ah, the train here is the same thing that you, you had in Brazil? Man, here's... I think it's better now. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. It's better now. I've been told that now, the only reason to go to Brazil is for the beaches, <laughs> not, not for the jiu-jitsu. Do you, do, you, do you agree with that? Like, still, like, a lot of good jiu-jitsu there, but, uh, like, everyone wants to move here because the jiu-jitsu is getting bigger and bigger here, so. And the city that we live there doesn't have a beach, so right. here yeah. is better. <laughs> that made it easier. <laughs> here we live five minutes from the beach. <laughs> Let's talk about the new academy. You guys are opening up in Costa Mesa. Is it Costa Mesa or Newport? It's, it's like, right on the border, right? Yeah, like, I live in... Newport Beach, right across the street, is my academy. <laughs> and it's Costa Mesa. Yeah. <laughs> How is this academy going to be different from from the others? Like, like I said, like our main idea or goal is to focus on the kids program, mm. you know, and to teach people like the five laws of Jiu Jitsu, the Jiu Jitsu lifestyle. We don't like people trying to kill each other in the training. We are gonna have the competition class, what, and it's gonna be great, like doing camps before the tournaments, you know, teaching people or, or BJJ style, but we also want to ha- teach people like, people who doesn't want to compete, teach them the lifestyle that I think is the most important. When you, you absorb the lifestyle, then like, you can change your life, mm-hmm. you know. Let's talk about the camps for a minute. We've been down to Andre Galvao School in San Diego a few times filming the, the training camps. Mm-hmm. Now there's going to be two big auto <coughs> schools. W- will there be a camp? Will it go back and forth, or will be there be two camps going on at the same time? Yeah, w- I think we can help each other. So yeah, like go going back and forth. Like ah, let's do the Pan Ams camps here at the Andreas Academy, and uh, I don't know the ADCC camp yeah, at my we Academy. We yeah. always we want to support Andrea how we can, and he wants to support us for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So our idea is to help each other. Yeah, we are a team, so it's. It's better for for us to work together, right. not be like competing. We are gonna yeah. work together. No, it will be good for for him. It will be good for us for mm-hmm. sure. Now let me ask you a question. I think is on a lot of people's minds that mm-hmm. might be considering if they should train with you guys, join your school or not. There's a, been a lot of Brazilians that have come to America and put their name on the outside of the academy. <laughs> people will sign up and be all excited about it, and one year later, the guy's gone, setting yeah. up a shop somewhere else. Is that gonna happen with you guys? No, for sure not. Yeah. A lot of people they are Im- sending us email. They are calling us and asking about. Oh, the men's bros be teaching there or is just their name there. We just moved here. My wife and his wife just got here like last night. Mm. So we are here. We are gonna stay here. We are living yeah. here yeah. already. <laughs> so we are gonna teach every class at the academy. No, like we will be so busy for us, but we wanna make sure. Uh, we can teach our, our style, we can teach our students, not, not just put our, our name there, bring another instructor, and ah, the many bros, men's bros account, but someone else is teaching. Uh, because people can see our schedule on our website, and we have a lot of seminars. We, to and be honest, we have uh, seminars almost every weekend until December, it, mm-hmm. but they we'll be only in the weekends, so we are gonna, yeah. and we'll be only U.S. Mm-hmm. They ask you, oh, you guys are going to teach you seminars, who's going to teach the academy? That's why we, we are scheduling all the tournaments for the weekends. So yeah, we can teach the seminars. Yeah, the seminars. So we can teach you from Monday to Friday and then do seminars the weekends. Now, every time I see you guys, you're always together. Will you be teaching the classes together or will some classes be taught by Guy and some by Hafa? No, we prefer to teach you together because. Always together. Yeah, always together. Uh, the why is because, look, uh, when we teach together, if if I show the position using s- 
and a student, it will be hard for him to see the position. So when I'm 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 showing the position with my brother, it's it's easier for the students yeah. to see the position. No. Even in the seminar, yeah. people like a lot because they don't need to be the sparring. Yeah, <laughs> the dummy. They can <laughs> be, like they can absorb all all the details, and they also because it's both of us like walking around, walking and, around watching. and helping the students. Mm -hmm. No. It seems like you guys have spent a, a little bit of time thinking about how to teach together too. Not just that there's going to be two instructors, but you've tried to figure out how the two of you would teach at the same time. Yeah, I think we we have a, a good philosophy how to teach together because we have been teaching a lot of seminars. Yeah, so all the seminars. We have a lot of experience teaching together. teaching together. Do you think it's something you guys improved on as you've taught more or that you learned a lot while you were teaching? I think we can, when we teach, we can see a lot of details. Yeah, like because like sometimes you do some technique, but uh, you don't realize about the details. But uh, when your student asks, "Hey, why you are grabbing here?" Then you say, "Well, why you grabbing here?" Then mm. you realize why you do that. You know. So when you teach, you learn a lot. Right. With the students' questions. There's a couple questions in the chat. People are asking, "How much a month is your academy going to cost?" We have a lot of plans, like. Depends yeah. how they want to train. If they tr want to train two times a week, three times a week, uh, every day will be different price. How about for unlimited? Uh, for unlimited, uh, one year agreement is uh, two hundred dollars. That's reasonable. Yeah. For for two and two world class instructors, yeah. not not just one world champion, but two. And the facility that we have now, like uh, we have two mats rooms, so man, like showers, uh, complete locker rooms, so. That kind is so nice. Yeah, we are going to have a uh, laundry service. If you go there and you you yeah. want to leave your gear there and we wash. Wow. And next wow. day you just yeah. grab your gear, clean, and you can train. <laughs> My wife would appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's a nice service. <laughs> so yeah, I understand you guys had some help getting set up with the new academy. Can yeah. you tell me a little bit about who helped you with that? Uh, yeah, like, we are so lucky because God, God like, is blessing us so much. No, I think without the the help that we have from great people around us, it would be so hard to to be here today. So our sponsor Ruka, you no, know, uh, they are helping us so much. You no, know, Pat Tenor, he's the guy who's who's giving us a lot of opportunities here. He's helping us so much to open up our own school because you no know, people sometimes they don't realize how hard it is to move like from Brazil come to America open up a school and start teaching class. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. You just move here and do things yeah, by yourself. It's about changing our, your life. Yeah. So he's giving us a great support. You know, like I want to say thanks so much for him. You no, know, he's, he's not just uh, a great person. You no, know, he wants to, to help people. Mm -hmm. you no. Know? So I think this is really nice. Like you want to help people and you can do that. You no, know, it's, it's amazing. That's great. You guys can just focus on teaching yeah. and not have yeah. to worry too much about the mm. business side. Yeah. So let's get back to competition for a second. Um, during your competition, we saw a lot of 50-50, especially at the World Championships. And y you guys had to deal with the 50-50 a lot. What are your thoughts on the 50-50 position? I think people say a lot, ah, it's a uh, stalling position, but... Right. You can see people starting position, is starting the fight using spider guard or half guard or just or on top. So I think it's not the position. The problem is not the position. It's about the the fighter. Like sometimes you see like the fight is not moving too much, but if you if you see it's two two fighters with a top level, so it's hard. Even the training is hard to you see points or submission it's a really hard fight so i think it's a common position you can attack you can stall you can you can use yeah like it's up to you can stall the match or you can you can like finish the guy right it it's up to but so. let's be honest both you guys were stuck in the 50 50 for most yeah. of your final match at the at the worlds and a lot of people thought that was kind of boring and you guys are not boring fighters yeah. you're some of the most exciting guys out there H how does that make you feel uh, yeah, like I understand because people want to see like, like they don't want to see the 50th position for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I totally understand that. 
but uh, it's really hard. Uh, just I, I think just if you go there and you fight, you understand how hard it is to be in the world's final and like, especially in the black belt. Yeah, in the black belt <laughs> and ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And if you've been di been dieting for three months, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not something like when you go there, your like your idea is just I wanna I wanna I wanna be the f the champion here today, so. If something happens, like, ah, oh, if you need to put in the fifth fifth, the guy will put you in the fifth fifth. You are gonna put the guy in the fifth fifth. No, not to stall to stall the match, but uh, you can like attack. You can stall, but uh, if you feel it's a better position for you, yep, it's a position that you feel comfortable for yeah. the, for the fight. You are gonna put in the fifth fifth for sure. Or if you if you feel you need to stop the guy using spider guard, you are gonna use the spider guard. So. I think it's not the p the prob the problem is not the position it's the how about the fighters yeah. are thinking I I think to be honest like if if people be honest everyone will be wherever it takes to get the first place so if they need to put in the 50 50 they will do it did for it sure does, did you did it surprise you that Cabrinha put you in the 50 50 for sure right. for sure because I always I always say, I always say that like doesn't matter like you the position is there, like everyone can can use the position. But he he was always saying like, ah, uh, this position they should like uh, take it out of the position. Right, don't, don't let pe people use the position. And then like he's using the position. Right, like he's he's spoken out against fifty fifty. Yeah, like I was. I mean, when I was watching, I was a little surprised. I was like, oh, go Cabrera. And then like I really got surprised. Like, what? Why he's using fifty fifty now? So. But I, I think like that's not a problem. Like he needs to use the position is there if if he needs to use. Why right. not? Right. It seems like that, especially you know, you're in the finals. You've you know you've put all this effort and you've fought all these times, and you're in you're in the finals. It doesn't seem like if you're competing, you would go, no, I can't go to the fifty fifty. I'm gonna uh, lose, yeah. but I'm not gonna put in the fifty fifty. Right. But do you think there should be a different rule for the fifty fifty? I think they can they can change the rules a little bit if if a lot of people is complaining about the position. I think that would not be a problem, not if for me. If you were making the rules, would you do anything different? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. But uh, if they want to put like I don't know, oh, you 30 seconds, 40 seconds, then right. need to stand up. Like I would be okay for me. There is no problem. Uh, one thing that I don't like in the rules uh, it's about the referee be a fighter or. Yeah. A mm. professor. Yeah. So I think yeah. I think that's it's a bigger problem than the fifty fifty. But how do you fix that problem? Who who's gonna know the ins and outs of jiu jitsu if you're not uh, a competitor? I think that the best way to do is like uh get some people like from I don't know, from anywhere from Poland and bring the guys here, teach them the rules and put them to to be the referee. But no. can you really know the rules if you're not a competitor? But do you think the the referees they really know the rules? Well, I don't think you you can really know the rules. I if think you're not the a main referees they really know the rules, yeah. but we see a lot of guys during the five days, they don't really know the rules. Yeah, it's a difficult job. Yeah, 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 I know. That's why I think they they need to to have a a team just just to to be the referees. They like they don't need to cheat. They don't need to do some anything else. They will be like just studying yeah. the rules. I see some guys. They are, they are referring. They are referee and they fight in the tournament. So yeah. they yeah, are one, thinking one about their fights the, and doing their jobs as a referee. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it's tough. So you're saying that it would be the best if the referees could make their whole job just being a referee. Yeah, yeah that's right. it. I think that'd be uh, the ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Not being the coach or fighting the tournament the next day. I can't imagine right. working all day long and, and still knowing. It's when impossible. Yeah. That's I why I you, we can see a lot of mistakes. I mean, even with breaks, they're still there. You know, yeah. a long time. Long time. Yeah, it's a really hard job. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we are not saying like they, they, they like ah. This guy is trained with me, so I'm gonna give him the victory. It's not like that. But the guy needs to stay there all day. Then he needs to fight. He needs to coach his students. 
Sometimes you see the guy is he's the f referee, but he he needs ah oh, I need to hurry up because my my student is gonna fight. I need to coach him. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. The, the guy needs to be there, like just paying attention to the match. Yeah, it's a lot on 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 their mind. A lot of pressure, like so. Mm -hmm. right. Last time I was in San Diego, um, I was talking to you guys, and you told me that you see it as your job to create new style of jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. Where did you get this idea? When when in your career did you say we're going to be the guys to make the new style? I think because like w we realized that. Every year you can see a world champion, the guy can won five, ten times. But always we will have a new champion. But when always, we every always, year. every year. But when you create something and bring it to Jiu Jitsu, then people will never forget. Right. And I want to do something that people will never forget. So that's our idea. That that's why we like to develop those years, like it's I I I really wanna be the champion, be the first one. But when I go to the tournament and I see the, all the purple belts, brown belts, and blue belts using the bearing bowl, man, it's much yeah. better than winning the tournament. Mm. Yeah, you can see you are putting something different in this part. Mm -hmm. We went there in, in the day of the purple belts just to watch them fight. Mm. Very excited. Do you think the the lower belts are more quick to adapt to new techniques than the upper belts? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Because usually the like the black belts, they they already have their own style, the position that they like. But for the blue belts, purple belts, like they can adapt. Like yeah, uh, and quick, they have the idols in the sport. And they they watch and they say, ah, I wanna fight like this guy. I wanna be like this guy. So they start to adapt to create the his game like the his idol. Mm -hmm. What adjective would you use to describe your style versus the older style jiu-jitsu? I've heard it called acrobatic. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but what, what do you think is the main difference between your style and, and the older guys? To be honest, we, tr we train a lot the old style, the, the traditional jiu-jitsu. We train a lot the uh, arm bars, uh, from close guard, positions like yeah. omoplata, triangle, every day. All every the foundations day. we train every day. But uh, we try to see all the positions from a different angle. Like we try to do leg drag when we are passing the guard. If everyone is doing when they are passing the guard, we try to do the leg drag when we are on bottom. Mm -hmm. You know. Do you so ever guys see a position and just say, "I wonder what would happen if I did this, or change one thing and see just what would happen?" No, sometimes we are like training, and I start to do one position like the leg drag, and then I just uh, I. Go on bottom and I can use this position on bottom. Look. Yeah, like we get the position on top, then lay down just to see if we can do the position when we are on bottom. Really studying the position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everybody like just ah I'm on top. I'm gonna just pass the guard. So we s we try to start passing the guard before we go on top. So something <laughs> crazy like this. No, we always try to do to yeah. the position. And we want to be like we we want to. We try to be always one step ahead. Like everybody is trying to use leg drag now. Okay, so we are we need to create a lot a different thing so we can surprise the opponents. Mm -hmm. So that's why that is how we think. Do yeah. you think this is good for lower levels to you know while they're training maybe think about different things they could do or it, should you get you know get very good at the fundamentals and then later? Yeah, I think when we start. You need to get all the fundamentals, and then as soon as you start to understand how is the fight, then you start to like use like more advanced. Uh, I think if you are a competitor, when you get your purple belt, you can start to create position yeah. and try to bring something new. But the to beginning your game. is really important. You have a good like fundamentals. Right. You know, really important. It seems like you guys help each other a lot, breaking things down and I'll developing work. new positions. I'm just curious, do you guys ever fight? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. This is the real question. A lot. <laughs> if a you lot. if you watch our training, <laughs> what kind of, what kind of things do you guys argue about? <laughs> like, uh, he likes to be the referee of the match when <laughs> we train against each other. <laughs> always, he always knows. Uh, like, ah. Uh, this is two points. No, that was not two points. Oh, it was two points. He always <laughs> no. <laughs> the point is never lose when we train. <laughs> <laughs> never <laughs> was not point. 
you know, back when I when I first met you guys, I never really knew. You almost seemed like twins to me. You know, you guys were always together. Come on, come on. on. <laughs> but I started to figure it out. And some people in, in, in San Diego at Gaval School were, were telling, almost everybody had the same comment. They said that Guy is the brains and Hoffa is the brawn, the muscles. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, you, do you agree with that assessment? I think so. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> no fight, no fight. He likes to study, like, all the posi- like. I like to study too, of course, but I prefer to study position when we are training. Then he is always in the computer watching the match to like to see how is the game that the guy is gonna fight against. No, so yeah, he likes to. Yeah, I think we complement each other. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've heard you're very good at identifying a student's strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like always, when I'm in training, like I like him to be yeah. watching my match like then asking oh what do you see like what we need to change w- yeah we complete each other like when he created a technique i try to do the technique to vi- to see if it works i like to help the guys <laughs> <laughs> i like to be the coach i like to go to the competition like when i go to the competition uh, i don't like to rest like three days before i always if you see i'm always trying to coach the guys and help them I said at the Worlds, you're always at uh, the barrier. Always, always. Yeah, always. Mm. And in the training, like, always when f- we finish the training, like, we like to stay on the mat and, like, talk to the students, like, uh, figure out their mistakes. We ask, oh, what do you guys think you guys need to improve? Then we stay on the mat teaching them, uh, like, breaking down the mistakes. I think this it's really important, like, you know, this kind of training not just yeah. go there train one hour and a half go home bye no <laughs> we stay there like talking about the position no it's, it's yeah. really important we like i can't to wait to be a professor because <laughs> i feel so good when my training partners they win and they they are happy right. and i can't wait to and to like be, to see our students fight since we we got a black belt we have been teaching a lot of seminars like everywhere so now, like, I feel I need to teach my own students. You no, know, like, I need to. I mean, teaching in a lot of academies, but I want to have my academy teach my students. My students, it's so nice to teach. Uh, to uh, to have your own students and see, see them they improving. Yeah, they yeah. like they competing. You no, know, so nice. I, I like a lot. For all you guys that are watching live, I want to remind you that we do have a chat room. Just below the video screen, there's a chat. Just go ahead and uh, make a, a username there and, and click register, and you'll be in the chat. If you have any questions for the Mendes brothers, we'll be happy to ask them. So please join in and make this uh, interactive. There is one question that's uh, coming up a few times. BJJ Chris in the chat is asking, will you guys stay with Atos or form your own affiliation? Atos. <laughs> yeah, we have our 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 partners, so... We we want to compete in the big tournaments as Atos, but we are gonna have our academy, and we, we are gonna call our academy Art of Jiu Jitsu Academy. Yeah. So in these small tournaments, the students will be representing this name, but for the big tournaments, we want to represent Atos and support them because they are who have they have been uh, helping us a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So on the outside, it's not going to say Mendes Brothers. It's going to say Art of Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, like it will be AOG Academy Art of Jiu-Jitsu oh, okay. Academy Mendes okay. Bros. Yeah, okay. yeah, we are going to put together. Very cool. So you guys are obviously have had a long and successful career in competition, and um, maybe we'll step back or go back in time for you. What were some things you would suggest for new competitors, people that maybe are competing their first or second time? If you can think back that far. I think the biggest problem when they start competing is they get so nervous. Right. No, like but it's hard to say don't get nervous yeah. because they will get nervous. They will get nervous. <laughs> so I think it, the professor needs like to know how to talk with the, the student and how to make him like be calm, you know, to do very well in the tournament. No, not just ah oh, go there. You need to to go there and finish the guy. No, you need to know how to talk. And Hamon, our coach, he's really good doing that. Like yeah. before the, the the world's final, he called us and he stayed with us like one hour mm. talking, just like 
talk about the mindset that we need to have for the tournament, you know, how to think about the tournament. So it's really important. You know. It's not just training hard, but you need to have a good mindset. But before your first competition, is there anything anybody can say that's going to make you calm? I mean, you just, don't you just have to do it to get over it? Uh, I think you have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys still feel nervous when you compete? No, but I see a lot of coaches, they, they like, screaming and mm. you need go, to be go, calm go, go, and go, go, go. <laughs> try to make the the student comfortable mm -hmm. right it's a really hard situation do you still feel nervous when you compete yeah yeah ever if you don't feel nervous you don't want to win right yeah right. if you're nervous because you care about you want to really win so what do you do to to deal with the nervousness i like think it's uh, like you need to to be confident. Right. So when you are confident, you train a lot. You know, like how how you have been working. So then when you go there, you put in the scale, and then you can fight and be comfortable. You're still nervous, but you're still more confident. Now I'm more confident than nervous, mm -hmm. but yeah. still nervous. If you have a good preparation before the tournament, then you can feel comfortable. No? You get really nervous when you think about like this, like, oh, I could train more. Then, yeah, <laughs> you're so done. <laughs> so when you feel y yourself get nervous, do you say to yourself, okay, no, I've trained really yeah, hard. Yeah, right? that's it. You've done all the work, yeah. so you're you're ready. When, when I start to think, oh, what's gonna happen if I lose? I said, no, I'm not gonna lose. I trained so hard. I'm confident. No, that's how I think. Always when I start because when you go fight, it's it's crazy. Like you starting. What's gonna happen if I lose? What are people are gonna say? Then you start. Especially worst finals. Yeah. A lot of guys <laughs> taking pictures and you don't wanna if be in the magazine. If, if someone <laughs> choking me from the back, they, they're gonna put in the cover of the magazine. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna lose. I trained a lot, so it's not gonna happen. Then you start to be calm again. <laughs> no, but that's actually, I mean, especially at your level, that's something you have to worry about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You have to push it down and say, I'm yeah. ready. So, <laughs> and this is always a hard one and you guys obviously have cutting weight down you know you have it to a science but for someone that's newer to competition when um what wh what would you suggest to someone that said you know if they were if they were your student when and they said i'm thinking about cutting weight to the weight class down what what would you suggest i think if they are not black belts they don't need to be like cutting weight like crazy they just fight they need to be confident and be like s strong not no it's hard for like a white belt cutting weight right so i think just if you are like black belt no like in the black belt division then you, you think about cutting weight but uh, when you are white blue purple and uh, brown i always yeah. say for the students uh, like everything you do before your black belt uh, you are just you are training oh, everything if you win the the words if you win the Pan Am is you are just training. When you get your black belt, everything like starts over. Okay. Right. Because they will be like nervous, like imagine they, they nervous and need to cut the weight. Right. So it's just just better if they just go there and fight like comfortable. And that's one thing I definitely feel, especially when I've tried to cut weight, is that on the day of the tournament it's just one more thing I have to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, yeah. So at the lower belts, you, you think it's more important to be comfortable than to be mm -hmm. at a different For weight? For sure. For sure. Okay. Um, and this is always the hard one. And it's, you know, it's bound to happen to everyone at a lower belt especially. But when students lose, and, you know, it, it's never fun. But what are some things that you would tell new competitors or your students when, when they lose how to, how to, you know, deal with it or... Like I said, it's just training. You you lose in the train, you win in the train. You just need to keep going, right. keep going, and keep your focus because every bar lose. If you see, if you see it, every bar will lose many times, but you need to keep going and doing your best. Yeah, like of course, no one likes likes to yeah uh, to lose. Sure. You cannot say ah, uh, it's okay. <laughs> right, the yes, I lost. Yeah. No one will be happy. But it's more about the overcome, no. You need to go there, you need to fight, and if you lose, you go back to the academy, you fix your mistakes, right. and be better for the next time. And so you cannot think like, I will not lose. 
Right. Yeah. Never. There's no Never. superheroes. Yeah. No. So it sounds like you're saying almost treat it like an extra sparring session or a special sparring session where it's more about you know learning than necessarily bringing home a medal. Do you think for for people for lower belts, you know, white, blue belt, it's more important to learn from it? I think you need to in the lower belts you need to go there and try to have fun. Right. Enjoy the moment. Yeah, it's hard, but you, you need to go there to and try to have fun because if you go there and you don't feel comfortable and you you don't like the situation, it will be hard. Yeah. Right. If you go there, and, oh, I need to get that gold medal, otherwise, oh, what are gonna ha- it's gonna happen. Look, live when live this part when you get a black belt. Yeah. When you <laughs> just go there and have fun, enjoy the moment. You know? right. Got some questions in the chat. People are asking, what's your normal physical conditioning routines that you do? Uh, we have uh, our cousin, Chago Mendes. Yeah. He's, he's our personal training. To be honest, he's the guy who introduced us to train Jiu Jitsu. Mm-hmm. And then he started to, he doesn't like to compete. He doesn't like the feeling. And he started to study and he loves Jiu Jitsu, so the way he he see to to be with us is always pre- doing our preparation and trying to help us to win the tournament yeah and uh, like we have a schedule like like when we finish the tournament the words we talk with him and we create a schedule for one year so what do you what do you do the on next a tournament what do you do on a weekly basis do you lift weights jogging or like what? we lift weights like twice a week and three times a week we do like a circuit training. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, now we were doing different trains because I was cutting weight. Yeah. And I it's could very, not lift weights personal, hard yeah. because uh, I was trying to run a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think the, the the circuit training that we do is really important for the jiu-jitsu, for jiu jitsu. So it's just jiu jitsu is not enough to be a world champion? I think. I think you need to do the, the, the physical preparation because you need to fight 10 yeah. minutes at the black belt. Everything you add, it's good. Yeah. So if you just train Jiu Jitsu, the guy just trained Jiu Jitsu, but there is another guy who is trained Jiu Jitsu and he has a very good physical preparation. Right. He has like leverage, you know. Let's talk about your seminars for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, Dane and I went to your seminar that you had in, in LA last year. And I gotta say that was the best jujitsu yeah. seminar I've ever went to. <laughs> Thank you so much. Glad yeah. to know you guys enjoyed. Yeah, you guys are incredible teachers. I and forgot more than I learned. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to go back to that same exact <laughs> seminar. <laughs> but not only were the techniques amazing, but you guys lined everybody up. Yeah. Probably <laughs> didn't even know half of the guys there, <laughs> and just and just destroyed one after another and <laughs> another. And you, and you didn't stop after you went through the the whole line. Right. right. You went through the line two or three times. <laughs> no, that was the thing because I remember watching it and I was like, "You've gone with him twice before," and you're just like, "Okay, slap, go." And I would see black belts that were maybe black belts for ten years just get like they'd get submitted in a minute and just like. <laughs> they had this look of disbelief, <laughs> <laughs> and that w- that was amazing to see because I haven't been to a lot of seminars where people actually did that. And I just wonder where do these brass balls come <laughs> from <laughs> that, <laughs> that you're willing to take on all these guys? Uh, <laughs> you know, like when we go to the seminars, people they want to learn the techniques, but they really want to train with us. Right. They want to see. Oh, let me see if this guy is like. Yeah, they, they want to feel. They want to feel you if you are strong. Yeah. Like but some I guys aren't treating you like training. Some guys really want to. Yeah. Know. yeah. They went for it. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> but it's nice like we like to go there and uh, train with everyone because we know that because they ask us oh, can I train with you so we like you to train so of course that's when we have bar mm-hmm. and we like to train with different people like that like when you are training you you know the game of everyone but right. when you train with different people you you don't know the game is uh, it's different it's yeah we love we like and the students they always they like that a lot, so they say, "Oh, I like your seminar. You roll with everyone. That's so nice." And we have been doing this like since our first seminar, and that's nice. So they like it a lot. Where did Where did you get that idea? Did Did Hamon do that? No, oh, we, we are competitors. Well, we like to <laughs> roll. <laughs> and <laughs> Hamon, uh, he always does on his birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he always does. <laughs> like his that's birthday, he's, he 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 line up F bar and roll with everyone. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> that's nice. Let's talk about Hamon for a minute. Not a lot of people know him. He's not a world champion. Mm-hmm. Do you think you guys could have developed to your potential under a different instructor? 
Or was there something special about him that brought this out of you? I yeah. think there's something special about him. And like, what, what was that? He's, he's so good teaching Jiu Jitsu, but I, the most important is like the way that he he makes you believe in yourself. Like he can talk to you and say say like the way that he, he talks to you makes you like so confident to be our champion, to train hard. You you are tired, you don't wanna train, he goes there and like he can motivate you so much. Yeah. Like and he's incredible. really smart. Like you are fighting and he's watch watching your next opponent and when you go fight he say, Ah, now you pass to this side and Change you grab it here and he will be in trouble. Mm. Trust me. And then you go there and man. Yeah. It works so that's cool. He he has a different vision. So yeah, yeah. It's hard to explain but he has something special. <laughs> no, I know there's some guys out there that think, I want to be the best, so I'm going to train with the, the, with the Mendes brothers. Mm -hmm. But you guys didn't choose to train with a world champion. You, you chose maybe because of where you lived, but you trained with a guy that wasn't a world champion, but he developed you. So the question is, do you have to train with a world champion to become a world champion? Like, I don't think you just be a world champion if you train with a world champion. You, you can train, like, anywhere, and... It's must. It's more about you, how you dedicate yourself, and how you believe in yourself. Mm. But like, of course, people always try to to train with someone they think will help them more than or if other ones. They have something special. Yeah. Yeah. But for sure, you guys have been through a lot that you're going to be able to pass on to other aspiring competitors. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So you guys trained with the Sheik in Abu Dhabi. And um, <laughs> in a lot of ways, because of the, the ADCC, this is sort of, you know, mm -hmm. this, this great experience that I think just about everybody in BJJ would want to do. What was it like? like what, what, did, what did you train with him? Yeah, first time I went there was after the ADCC 2009. I was in home, the computer, like, uh, then I got an email. <laughs> and uh, the guy saying, hey, uh, hi, Rafael, the Sheikh of Abu Dhabi wants to train with you. And I was, well, it must be a joke, huh? <laughs> 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 it was for real. <laughs> then I went, to Ab <laughs> I went to Abu Dhabi, first class, Emirates. Wow. First class. Man, it's, it's, it's uh, unbelievable. Like, you go there, he's such a nice guy. Like, uh, first I was thinking, like, uh, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna do? Why the guy will be there using that <laughs> that uh, the room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I went there. I was waiting for him, and he came wearing uh, shorts, a hat, a UFC hat, <laughs> 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 a shirt. Hey, let's roll. <laughs> then I went there. Like the guy, like he makes you so comfortable. Uh, I felt at home, and now I have a friend friendship uh, with him. Like he's so nice. I heard he's very competitive. Is that true? <laughs> he likes to roll like he doesn't want to like go ah oh, let's roll easy no he likes to he's a good like he's good because he's trained with so many people like he's absorbed like uh, a lot of details from everyone yeah, like, he knows a lot he has a, a great knowledge about the jiu-jitsu is but there one guy's game that you can feel that he's absorbed more of uh, not really like he, he likes to to like when I go there he asks me ah oh, what do you like to do Oh, I like to do leg drags on when I'm passing the guard. Then he, oh, let, let's do through the leg drags. So every time that I go there, he's using uh, the position of the the next the the last guy went there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's nice because I think you learn more than you teach when you go there. <laughs> That's because true. he knows a lot. It's incredible. <laughs> like I tell people uh, when I go there, like that guy, he showed me a lot of position. People, when ah, we, sh we show some position and somebody asks, ah, where you learn? Ah, chic. <laughs> Shik Shik uh, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> so did you guys go together? Or did yeah, you go went there yeah. together. I went there alone. I have been there like maybe eight or nine times. Yeah. Besides jujitsu, how was the experience hanging out with the Sheik? Yeah. So, like one time, uh, he was going to vacation, and uh, he, he brought me to Morocco. Oh wow! Yeah, and. Uh, What's so cool, like, I went to Marrakech, well, I have so much fun, so nice, like, uh, you stay in a nice hotel, and then you have a cell phone, 
and you can call the guy ah i need to go to anywhere the guy oh it's okay that's no problem then I, then I was working in uh online nice place to to go in morocco then ah marrakesh hey can i go to to marrakesh the guy yeah okay no problem let's go there so it's, it's were you fun. <laughs> when you're hanging out with the sheik were you ever like i can't believe this is where I am, or this is what I'm doing. <laughs> like, because I met, uh, in my mind, you went to go train with a sheik, and, and then the next thing you know, you're in Morocco, just behind a computer going, like, where do I go? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, uh, jiu-jitsu is so nice. Like, I would never be there if it was not jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. So right. nice. Uh, we have uh, Keenan Cornelius in the chat room, and basically he's asking, it looks like he's asking, do you ever feel burnt out of jiu-jitsu? Do you ever get tired of it? Um... Yeah, to be honest, like when we are training, like we did now for the for the worlds, like it's hard training. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important you after after you are mis mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. So take a little break, you no know, recover yourself, you no. Know. So so now I want to train again. I want to train hard. But if if you don't rest for a little bit. You start yeah, to like and ah, you, you need to recover your yeah. body. So it's you hard to keep out. training all the year. To be honest with the in the other in the lower belt. Yeah, but now I think uh, we need to take some yeah. break mm -hmm. after the big tournaments because the preparation now is much harder. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you choose which tournaments you do now more carefully, or? Yeah, yeah, now now because we have seminars mm. and we are gonna now have we are going to have our academy, so we need to choose. Before, when I, when I was purple belt, I was fighting every weekend. Mm -hmm. Right. So now we choose like more. Uh, no. In Brazil, especially, it's really easy to fight every weekend, a lot of every tournaments. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're a white belt, there's so you have so much to learn. When you're a blue belt, still, there's a ton of things to learn. But after you get a little higher probably you develop your game and you have less and less to learn do you still think does it does it get less or do you still think there's a no, lot i think now we learn more than before yeah because now when you are the champion of your division you you need to to take care you need to like think ah i need to develop something and keep the title so it's Just because a, a lot of pressure so everyone's trying to get your place like so you know. When you win a championship and you go back to the academy, do you see training in a different way now where it's, you know, I have to I have to come up with something new or yeah, I have to yeah. for sure because uh, like you see what people what what they were trying to do to don't let you do your position, then you start ah now I need to change something. No. Right. Yes. That's why we like to compete because when you compete you can evolve much faster. Mm. And nice because in the especially in the black belt you f fight against the same guy many times so right. he, like last time I, I could finish him this time he used this position to to stop my passing guard. So now what I need to do? So it's like a chess. Uh, so yeah. yeah, that's true. Like at the Pan Ams when I fought against Cobra in the finals I was using a, a a position to sweep and then go to the arm bar. Then I, I try to do the same position mm -hmm. in the fight at the world tournament. But uh, I, I, s I swept him, I got the leg drag, but then, like, boom. Then he put him in the 50 50 mm -hmm. because the defense for that position was putting the 50 50. Right. No. So we've seen some. So now I have to develop another position. Right. So what are you working on? We've seen a lot of great development with the broom below. We've seen the leg drag. What What's next? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we need to create something new. Now we are gonna start training hard again, like next week. And as I, I told you before the panel, as you remember, you asked, "Oh, do you guys have something special?" I said, "Ah, you see, we cannot say now. It's a secret." Mm -hmm. Then panel is boom. I, I, I think you the, right. the nice thing we are always trying to think about the next step. Like when we like, I'm gonna do the leg drag. What? What you are gonna do to defend the leg drag? Ah, you are gonna put your hand here. So, what you need to do to yeah. use this hand to attack you? It's more about the opponent's reaction that you yeah. what you do. Like, you are gonna do this, but depends what depends about your opponent's reaction. Right. Then you have your options. So you are here. You try the arm bar, but your opponent has this defense. This defense. He can defend it. Like this, this, this. How you are gonna do? 
when he tries to defend your position. Yeah. So you need to be one step ahead so we can surprise him fast. At the Altos training camp in San Diego, you have a lot of guys, some of them from other, other schools, training with you guys. What, what do you not teach people? I'm sure you don't teach them everything you know. Like, I, uh, like if uh, people ask us, we teach everything. I don't like to, like, people come to me, hey, can you teach me the bearing ball? Then, like, I'm going to teach him the wrong position. I don't like that. So, if they ask us, we teach everything. Like, but when we are doing camps like that, like, we need to be, like, we need to follow the schedule. So, I cannot just, uh, ah, today I'm going to teach this because some guy... He's training here, he's uh, from Australia, he's training here, and we're going to change the schedule. So we always follow the schedule. So sometimes people think, ah, they're not showing us the bearing bow. If, s if the bearing bow is not in the schedule, we're going to cheat the schedule, no. Because we are training for the competition, like, there's a schedule, so we need to follow the schedule. Yeah. But if they ask, that's why we, like, after the training, we stay on the mat, we do, like, an open mat, and then we start boom, boom, train, showing all the positions. Aren't you concerned if you show all your best moves that... Somebody will beat you with it? No, I don't. Like, a lot of people, they ask us, ah, the seminars, like, you ask, uh, no. You guys don't teach the bidding bowl because someone is going to learn the bidding bowl and then beat you in the tournament. Like, it doesn't make sense, like, you, you don't teach a position because someone is going to learn the position. If you use in the yeah. in the tournament, people will watch you and they are going to try to use the position. So, if you, what's the difference if, if you teach and if they study you? So right. it's going to happen anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Anyways, yeah. It's more about how you improve yourself than you can't like try to hold back. Yeah. Right. Right. But it happens sometimes that like I said, like people go there, they stay one week and they stay there or schedule is to do the leg drag, we're trying the leg drag. Then they go back home and they say, ah, they didn't show the bearing bow, they don't want to show the bearing bow. No, it's because the position was not the schedule. If they stay there like three months, they are going to train all the positions. No? Mm -hmm. So it's some misunderstanding. Okay. You mentioned tournaments. Uh, there's been a new development with the IBJJF. Gonna s there's going to be a paid tournament at yeah, the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to hear your comments about that. I think it's nice. nice <laughs> yeah. I think it's nice. Much better. No? <laughs> if you win, you get paid much yeah. better. Right. I, think I hope they, they keep doing this tournament, it's always improving, it's, it's a good starting. Right. Yeah. And last time, I remember a few months ago I asked you guys, when you move here, what tournaments will you compete in? And you said, we're going to do all the IBJF tournaments. Mm -hmm. Of course, now you have this new focus of your school, it'll probably mm -hmm. be scaled back a little bit, but do you have any uh, comments about which tournaments you're going to be doing in the near future? Uh, I think we will not be fighting until December, so... Yeah, like the Nogi Worlds, Pan Ams... Uh, no gi will, will be hard because you're gonna start the academy, will be busy. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we we'll, we'll like to keep our focus to do some. What we are gonna do, we want to do well, so we don't want to have many focus, so you, you can't do anything. So, right. our focus now is our academy. So, so yeah, maybe but after the six months, it will be like whew, now you can like Pan Ams, uh, like all the tournaments here. Yeah. Do you think you'll no. just do the uh, the paying tournament at the end of the year? Which one? The IBJJF tournament that uh, pays? I don't think so. No. I don't think no, so. No, to be honest, so. I don't think so because now I, I know that we are going to be so busy like with the academy. So I will not have time to prepare myself very well for the tournament. And I don't want to just go there and fight if, I, if I'm not like 100%. Yeah, I, I will never do that. Yeah. If I go to the tournament, I need to be... 100%. So what you're saying is that the world title, even though it doesn't pay, is more important to you than a paying tournament. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Okay, we got another question in the chat. Uh, people are asking, how important is flexibility in performing your style of jujitsu? Mm, I think it's important, but I think flexibility is important for all the positions. For if you are flexible, uh, it's really good. If, if you are fighting, even if you if it's not jujitsu, if you are fighting like Muay Thai, and if you are flexible, it's better. <laughs> right. So, but I think it's not like ah, you cannot do that position because you are not flexible. It's not like this. How about big guys? Can big guys do your style? Yeah. yeah. 
We see a lot of guys doing in this Bra- yeah, yeah, when we were in Brazil, like training there and teaching, like sometimes at Ramon's Academy, like we have a lot of guys, like big guys doing the beer in bolo. People <laughs> think, ah, these guys, they cannot do the beer. Ah, they can't do it, man. <laughs> they just need to train the position. Everything, if you drill, yeah. you learn, you learn the how to do the concepts, then you can do very well. You yeah. mentioned drilling. Of course, Galvao is very vocal about the importance of drilling. How important is drilling to you? It's really to be important. Yeah, really yeah. important. We love to roll. <laughs> we always say in the training, uh, we are roll to win. Andre is drill to win. <laughs> 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 but we we drill a lot. Yeah. Training, drilling, and rolling. How much? What percentage would you say you should uh, do? 50-50? Yeah. Well, there's, th- well, there's, three, there's three things. <laughs> training, training positions, drilling, uh-huh. and then sparring. I think first, like you, you need to study the position, get all the details. Then you start to drill the position like really fast, like doing very like like you're gonna do in the tournaments. You cannot drill like uh, slow, lazy. You need to do very fast, and then rowing. So I think s- I don't know. It's like w- depends. depends yeah, because because w- when w- we are developing the position, until we learn the position very well, we do slow. Yeah. So trying to to see all the details, all the opponent's reactions. So. When you feel we are doing very well all the details, then we start to do fast to yeah. get the time. You drill fast. Then after you like you drill the position really fast, then you start to roll to and try to do the position during the rolling. So, so you need to go step by step. Yeah, I think it's different steps, but during the train if you watch the train like we is drill and position fifth and f- other 50s rolling because we yeah. are competitors so mm-hmm. we need to roll you need to yeah. be in a good shape but it really depends like for the white belts it's more like studying the position than you drill less rolling so depends yeah it d- d- depends your belt depends your focus your goal like if you want to fight or if you just want to if you want to be like a if you want to have it like yeah, a, as ju- a lifestyle life, ju- ju- lifestyle so depends of your your goal. What do you guys mean by studying? Do you mean watching videos or being on the academy and you know just learning the technique or all of that? Yeah, like st- uh, watching the videos, like talking about the position. Yeah, it's more than just drilling, right. because we see a lot of guys they just go, like if you say ah do the leg drag, they, they drill the leg drag like a robot, so they just do this and they don't study, they don't start to yeah. think about the position. S- Sometimes you are doing the the wrong position, like with m- a lot of mistakes. So you need to make sure like everything is okay. Then, no. Right. All right. Well, you guys have any more comments before we go to the mats? Um, I wanna w- uh, invite everyone to to join uh, our grand opening. It, it's gonna be July first. Open for everybody. So everyone. it doesn't matter the team. Yeah. You can go there, you can hang out with us. Because so. we are going to have a free seminar, we are going to have like a, a party. It would be nice with a DJ, music, uh, food and drinks for everyone. So doesn't matter if you are from like any any other academy, just go there, you can go there, enjoy, you know, free seminar, it would be nice. It would be so nice. So it's going to be July 1st, uh, 1 p.m., okay. But we will be there before. Yeah. If you want to go there before and talk first, you can go there. The address is 411 East 17th Street, Costa Mesa. And your website? Your website is mendesbrothers.com. All right. Well, we're going to see an exclusive technique with the Mendes Brothers right over here on the mats. But in the meantime, let's check out a really nice highlight that we made of the Mendes Brothers.
Hi guys, we are here today. Uh, we are gonna show you how to do the leg drag pass from the spider guard. Okay. So again, I grab, okay, I lower my hips and I step back. Okay, now when I step back, I need to let go his pants. I let go his pants and I circle my hand all the way, okay, around his leg and grab again. Okay, because if I just stay here, it will be hard to pass. Okay, so I need to release this grip. So I let go of his pants, circle my hand, and grab his pants again. Now, look, he cannot use the, his foot on my biceps again. Okay, but it's still hard to break the grip. Okay, I'm gonna step forward and use my knee to break his grip. So I step forward, I use my knee against his leg, okay, and I break his grip. Okay. As soon as I break this grip, I'm going to use my hand here to grab his pants. Okay. So now if I just try to do the leg drag, it will be hard. I have no space. So I step forward, okay. Put pressure like if you want to bring his knee on his chest. Okay. Now his reaction will be like stretch his leg because he, wanna, he wants to release the pressure. So when the, guy's, when the guy tries to stretch his leg, I'm going to step back and I have space to drag his leg, okay? So really important to tell you here, when I drag his leg, I need to lower my, my hips and my chest as soon as possible. I cannot drag his leg and stay here because he has a lot of space, okay, to pass his leg over okay and play guard again so i drag his leg i lower my hips okay my chest goes down okay and my grip goes here i grab his collar okay so i was grabbing his pants i lower my chest and my hips okay and now i let go his pants and grab his collar it's a really important detail i really need to grab his his collar okay because when I grab his collar, I will be able to put pressure and don't let the guy push me away, try to push. Oh, okay, if I don't have this grip here, if I'm grabbing his, I don't know, his pants or his sleeve, I will not be able to keep the pressure. So I grab the collar, I put my hand down beside of his head, okay? Because if my head goes here, it's gonna push my head, okay? So it's really important where you put your head never put it here okay so your head goes right away beside of his head okay now when i let go of this his pants my hand goes right away grabbing his belt okay so i'm gonna let go of his pants and my hand goes right away here and grab his belt okay i grab his belt here I like to grab the belt because I can control his hips, okay? Let's say if I get the underhook, it's a good position, but the guy is still able to escape his hips, okay? When I grab the belt and pull up, try to escape my hips, he can. So I always like to stabilize the position here first, okay? So I stabilize the position here, and then after I stabilize, I hold the position, I stabilize, then I go to the side control. Okay, so then you can move to the side control. Okay, but it's really important when you go to the side control, you, br you bring your knee under his arm. Okay, if you just go here, the guy, the guy has a chance to escape. Okay, so from here, the transition from here, okay, from the leg drag position to the side control is like this. Okay, you keep your grips there. You walk to the side control, okay? Your knee under his arm, then you can let go, hug the head, and make sure when you hug his head, you hug, you hug his head and grab his shoulder here, okay? Grab the gi. I don't like to grab the collar because I give him too much space, okay? So I pass my hand, my, my arm under his head and grab here, okay? Always using your toes on the mat, be on your toes, okay? Don't be flat, okay? And then you stabilize the position.
Okay, one more time. So the guys play spider guard, okay? I cannot step forward, okay? I need to step back, okay? So I warm my hips, control his pants, and then we're gonna step back. Then I can circle my hand, boom, and grab his pants. So now I need to break the grip. So I step forward, use my knee to break the grip, okay? Grab his pants with both of my hands, then I step forward and I step back so I have this space to drag his leg. Okay, I lower my hips and my chest, okay, as soon as possible. I let go his pants and grab his collar. As soon as I grab his collar, I drop my knee on the mat, okay, and my head goes here, beside of his head, okay, making him flat. Then I can let go my hand here, my, my grip here, and use my hand to grab his belt, okay. I pull his belt, okay, so he can't escape his hips. Okay, then I need to go to, I stabilize the position, make sure it's tight, as tight as possible. Then I go to the side control, okay. I bring my knee under his arm, okay. Then, hug his head and grab the gi, okay. I don't like to grab the lapel because I give him the opportunity to escape, like too much space. So, oh, hug the head and grab the gi, okay. Hope you guys like the position. And if you guys want to learn more from us, go to the seminar, the grand opening. You'll be very welcome there. Gary Hoffa, thanks for the very detailed techniques. I know Dana and I both enjoyed having you here today. I want to remind you guys that next week, uh, this is a weekly show. Every week we have a new episode at 6.30. Next week we have Kevin Howell, who's one of the best jiu-jitsu authors out there and also head instructor of the Jiu-Jitsu League School in Long Beach, California. So please tune in next week at 6.30. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Thank you.